Sheriff's on his way back with the body now. I'm telling you, there's something mighty strange going on around here. First, the cattle and the horses ripped apart. Then old man Banks is found dead under mighty peculiar circumstances. Just ain't natural. Oh, hold on. We don't know yet how Banks was killed. No, but I hear he was all beat up when they found him. And how about Bill Johnson's cow? Nobody's ever been able to explain how it was mutilated. And all the sheep that's been disappearing. What happened to them? Yeah, and how about Cooper's chicken house? If you'd seen that place all busted down with dead hens all over the yard, you'd be thinking the way we are, I'm telling you. I saw it. Looked like a Texas cyclone hit it. Now, I ain't one to be superstitious, but don't it seem strange to you that these things are happening only at Devil's Crag? Ah, uh, you're talking crazy. All right. Hey, here comes the sheriff. Good. Now we'll find out what really did happen. What happened, Sheriff? Coroner's report shows Banks died as a result of a brutal beating at the hands of a person or persons unknown. Uh, cover him up. Not a pretty sight, is it? Oh, his body all torn apart, just like the animals we found. Okay, Art. Take him along. Look here, Parker. All of us who live up at Devil's Craig gotta have protection. No human being could do that. We think it's... Well, it's... Well, it's, it's supernatural. That's what we think it is. And we want to get to the bottom of this. Supernatural? That's silly. It ain't so silly, miss. If you'd lived here as long as most of us, you'd have heard of the legend of the curse. Yes, sirree. You just talk to some of the old Indians that are still around here, and they'll tell you what it is. All white men die. <laughs> Listen, you crazy Indian, if you had anything to do with this... That's all I am, Bert. I'll handle this. Joe, do you know anything about this killing? Nobody listen when I speak. Everybody say, Indian Joe, crazy Joe. But you find out now. The spirits of my people return for their revenge. Yeah, sure, Joe, sure. Now you listen to me. I want you to keep your inside information from the spirits to yourself. People around here are riled up enough without your jabbering. Now on your way before I run you in on another vagrancy charge. I go, but remember what I say. People who walk on Indian grave die. You hear that? What'd I tell you? You're right. Ah, the old loony living up in a deserted shack like a hermit. Yeah, he may be crazy. I ain't denying that. But sometimes crazy people know more than they get credit for. You're right. He's got his answer. What's yours, Sheriff? If you'll simmer down long enough, I'll tell you. I'm handling this case. First of all, I'm putting Devil's Crag off limits. What about us? Well, I want you folks who live near there to be on the lookout and alert for it. On the alert for what? Well, uh, be on the alert for anything out of the ordinary. Oh, then you do believe in the curse, huh? I didn't say that, and I don't want to hear any more about it. Until I clear this up, everyone is under suspicion. You'd all better be able to account for your activities last night when I get around to you. In that case, you better start with Wayne Brook. He had another run-in with Banks the other day. As a matter of fact, I heard the old man ran him off the place with a shotgun. I'll get around to him, and the rest of you, too. All right, come on, folks, and break this up and go on about your business. Here comes Mr. Brooks. I wonder if he's heard. Probably not. Hello, Ann. Hi, Charlie. Where are you kids headed? Well, I'm taking Sis up to the cabin so I can get back to the lodge in time for work. Say, have you heard about it, Mr. Brooks? I've been up in the mountains for three days. I haven't heard anything. It was awful, Wayne. Just awful. What was awful? Poor Harold Banks. I found him this morning, and he, he was... smashed to death. Every bone in his body was broken. I saw it. That's terrible. How did it happen? Parker says he was murdered. Murdered? Does he know who did it? No, not yet. He says everybody in town is under suspicion. He's over there. He wants to see you, uh... He knows about the trouble you had with Banks. Yeah, well, I guess I better have a talk with him then. See you later, Anne. Come on, Charlie. We better go. We're counting on that protection, Sheriff. Don't worry, you'll get it. You wanted to see me, Sheriff? Yeah, that's right. 
I want to have a little talk with you, Brooks. What do you know about the bank's killing? I just heard about it. Where have you been for the last few days? Well, I usually am up in the mountains, getting more rock specimens. Anywhere near the bank's place? What are you driving at? Answer the question. Well, as a matter of fact, I walked across this property about a week ago. It saved me a half mile climb. Why? Banks run you off again? Maybe he saw you trespassing and took a shot at you. Maybe you lost your temper and... And maybe I didn't even see the old buzzard. Can you prove that? Oh, come off it, Parker. You don't think I've got anything to do with this? Tell you, I haven't seen Banks in over a week. Pine Ridge? But, Dad, this is just a wide spot in the road. Well, I guess there are no beauty parlors or movie theaters, but I'm told the lodge is very comfortable. I hope so. Why don't you get off my back, huh? I will. When I think you're in the clear. You want to arrest me now, or do I have time to go home and get a toothbrush? I had you pegged for a wise guy ever since you came up here. I'm not finished with you yet, Brooks. Don't plan any more trips. Oh, don't forget my razor blades, Tim. Could I see your operator's license, please? I beg your pardon, officer. Is there anything wrong? Your driver's license, please. Surely. Now, what's the matter? Mr. Cleveland, there's an ordinance requiring a warning flag on anything protruding from a vehicle. <laughs> I'm sorry, officer. I forgot about the tent poles. I'll take care of them right away. Are you staying in town? No, only overnight. My daughter and I are heading into the mountains in the morning. Quite a lot of gear you have there. Are you planning to camp around here? Yes, you see, I'm an archaeologist. Mm. Weren't figuring on poking around Devil's Crag, were you? Devil's Crag? Now, look, officer, I don't know where I'm going to be working. I'm not familiar with the area. Thanks so much. I can manage now. Oh, no, let me put him in the car for you. Thank you very much. I thought I recognized you, sir. You're Professor Cleveland, aren't you? Well, yes, I am. And you are? Oh, you don't know me, sir, but I attended some of your lectures at the university. I'm Wayne Brooks. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you again, Brooks. This is my daughter, Janet. Hello, Mr. Brooks. Uh, pleased to meet you, Miss Cleveland. I see you've already met Nosy Parker. Mr. Cleveland, some pretty gruesome things have been happening around here lately. In fact, we've just had a violent killing. For your own protection, I'm advising you to be on your guard at all times. Especially be very careful who you associate with. And uh, don't forget about the flag. But, of course, I'll attend to it. You know, it sounded as though he was warning us about you. Uh, it's kind of a private feud between us. I'll explain sometime. Looks like you're planning to stay a while. Yes, I'll, um, I'll probably be working in this general area for perhaps a week or more. I've spent a lot of time around here. I know these mountains like the back of my hand. Maybe I can be of some help to you. Splendid. I just might take you up on that. Staying at the lodge? Well, yes, we are. Good. The food's wonderful there. If you be my guest tonight, I'll promise you the best steak you ever had. After canned beans for a week, it sounds wonderful. Uh, now, Janet, I don't think... Mr. Brooks, we'd love to join you. Mr. Brooks is my father. My name's Wayne. Okay, Wayne. It's a deal? It's a deal. Oh, Brooks. Oh, hi, Charlie. Say, fix us up with three of Mrs. Dunn's special steak dinners, will you? Okay, Mr. Brooks. Well, Ann was wondering what time you were going to Minda Junction tonight. Oh, Charlie, I forgot. I can't make it tonight. It's a good fetcher. I wish you could go. No, not this time, Charlie. I'm sorry Parker gave you such a hard time this afternoon, sir. Oh, I suppose he was only doing his job. Overdoing it as usual, Professor. I can see that you two don't like each other very much, do you? Oh, Parker's all right, I guess. Except for his bullheadedness. We just approach things differently. I think he's taking advantage of this opportunity to throw his weight around. As you know, a rancher was killed last night. Yes, that was a terrible thing. That's not the only thing that's happened. Quite a bit of livestock has disappeared, or 
been ruthlessly slaughtered. You see, all these killings have taken place near Devil's Crag. Since no logical answer has been found, well, some of the people are beginning to talk about the ancient curse. Curse? There's an old Indian burial ground near Devil's Crag. Quite a few arrowheads, pottery, and a few bones have been found up there. A few descendants of the tribe that once lived here are still around. They talk of a legend that someday the evil spirits will rise and destroy the valley. Have you ever been up to this Devil's Crag? As a matter of fact, I have. And even though it's out of my line, I've uncovered quite a few artifacts up there myself. Really? Well, I'd like to see them sometime. Of course. Though I don't think you'll find anything of value. You're welcome to go over them well, anytime. Splendid. This might save me a great deal of time and effort. Do you mind my asking what it is you're looking for, sir? I'm looking for a giant. A giant? Well, one that's been dead for over 500 years. Oh, for a moment I thought you were... But I was a crazy archaeologist. Well, if some of my colleagues knew what I was up to, I, I'm afraid that they'd agree with you. You know, the truth is that I am writing a definitive history of Bartolome Forello. He was a Spanish conquistador that explored a great deal of what is now California. My history will be complete only when I learn what happened to the Diablo giant and his band of renegades. Diablo giant? Devil giant? Yes. Yes, that was the name that was given to Vargas, one of Barolo's lieutenants. I have reason to believe that he and a band of his men, known as the Diablo Brigade, deserted Forello and headed inland in search of Indian gold. Well, why do they refer to this Vargas as a, a giant? Well, fragmentary accounts of the period relate that he was, well, he was a man of extraordinary size. But why the nickname Diablo, Devil Giant? Well, as a matter of fact, very little is known of Vargas. You see, Ferrello suppressed accounts relating to this officer, but from his name, I'm sure that he was a brutal, degenerate, and depraved man who disgraced and almost ruined the expedition. I'd like to hear more about him. And I wish I'd never heard of him. I hope that steak is as good as you say, Wayne. If you two are going to talk shop all evening, I'll have to be fortified. <laughs> I must apologize for my daughter's lack of interest in scientific matters. Just she was dropped from the unscientific branch of the family tree. And right into a pile of old bones. What a horrible fate for such a pretty girl. Now there's a man who knows the right thing to say. I can see that this conversation is headed away from scientific matters. So I will make you two a proposition. Look out, he's a sly one. Now, I promise not to say one word about Spaniards, relics, or bones throughout dinner. It's a deal. If. Look out, here it comes. If you will show me your Indian artifacts afterwards. Agreed. Professor, my laboratory is at your disposal. Good. If. Oh, he's a sly one, too. If you allow me the pleasure of escorting your daughter to Menden Junction tonight. Sounds fascinating. What's there? A double feature. She has my permission. After dinner, I'll change into my field clothes and meet you in the lobby. But Mr. Brooks, you said you weren't going. Now, don't worry, Charlie. We'll give you a lift. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Brooks. Um, Ann and I can use the station wagon. Well, here's to the success of the expedition. Well, Wayne, not with the water glass. <laughs> it's bad luck. It's only a small field lab, but it's adequate for my work up here. It's very complete, very complete. Oh, over here, Professor. My Indian relics are in here. Oh, it's a fine collection you have. Sorry they're not cataloged. <laughs> That's all right. That's perfectly all right. I can manage. What is it, Janet? I'm afraid my little mascot frightened her. Sorry I didn't think to warn you, but he's quite harmless in there. Well, it was silly of me. What a curious animal. More ways than you can imagine, Professor. You see, that ugly little fellow is the leading character in a thesis I'm preparing on the subject of physical antiquities. Physical antiquities? You mean that this animal is related to an extinct species? It is extinct. Why? It's the only one in existence. Here's the reason why. I found that lizard sealed inside this rock. Alive? Yes. That animal has lived in suspended animation for countless centuries. It's extraordinary. Oh, I don't believe it. 
No, I have read similar reports. Why, next thing you'll be telling me, there really is such a thing as suspended animation. That animals or even people could live indefinitely. I hadn't thought about it that way, but under proper conditions, it might be possible. Well, um, all this is uh, very interesting, and I would like to uh, discuss it at length sometime, but uh, right, right now... Right now, you're dying to get back to your Indian relic. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think she can read my mind. Professor, the laboratory is yours. Come on, Jan, you don't want to miss any part of that double feature. <laughs> Have fun, kids. Quickly, I've discovered something. There. Well, what is it, Dad? Looks like a cross. That's exactly what it is, only this particular cross was made by an Indian hundreds of years ago. It may be a clue to exactly what I'm looking for. I don't follow you, sir. Well, don't you see? This shows that the ancient Indians in this area were influenced by Europeans long before the earliest recorded white settlers arrived, possibly by the very band of men that I've been looking for. That sounds logical, sir. What's your next step? Well, it's time to load up the shovels again. Well, I would like to follow up this lead as soon as possible. Can you tell me where you found this cross, Wayne? I'll do better than that. I'll take you there myself. Splendid. When can we get started? Not tonight, Professor Cleveland. <laughs> No, no, not tonight, dear. When can you be ready? Tomorrow morning soon enough. Fine, we'll meet at the lodge for an early morning breakfast. I'll take some of my equipment along that might come in handy. I'll pack it in your jeep tonight. We'll be going above the snow line, and well, sometimes it hits unexpectedly. Where are you taking us, uh, Wayne? Devil's Crag. When I turned around, it was gone. Something brushed against the side of my face. Something cold and damp. Well, this thing, whatever it was, did you get a look at it? No, it was dark as the inside of your pocket when it happened. I couldn't hardly see nothing at all, but something was there. Did you hear anything? Did it make any kind of a noise? No, I was so scared, my ears were ringing. I couldn't tell you what kind of a noise it made. You're gonna have to give me more than that to go on. Well, it was there. Something was there. Hey, wait a minute. I ain't half finished. I want to tell you what else happened. I went home and told the wife. She said she'd heard funny noises, too, so it just wasn't me. Tell me when I get back. End of the line, folks. We go in there. The burial grounds are just on the other side of those rocks. Dad, Wayne. What is it, Jan? 
I just saw someone in those bushes. Well, it's just your imagination. Imagination? Nothing. I'm sure I saw a face staring at me. Well, to make you feel any better, I'll have a look. It was probably just a deer. These mountains are full of them. Uh-oh. The long arm of the law. Come on, Professor. Let's see what he wants now. The minute my back is turned, you disobey my orders and leave town. No one's left town. I have no reason to run away. You have no evidence to hold me on. Until you have, I'll be camped right here with Dr. Cleveland. You know this area is off limits. Now look here, Parker. I have every right... Now, nah, just a minute, Wayne. Let me handle this. Sheriff, I have a permit here from the Commissioner of Public Lands to do my research. Wayne here has been kind enough to offer me his assistance. I will assume full responsibility for his presence here. Dr. Cleveland. Besides conducting an investigation of murder, it's my responsibility to protect the property and lives of all persons under my jurisdiction. By disregarding my orders, you and your party could be exposing yourselves to a dangerous killer. Yes, we're aware of that, Sheriff. But we're armed, and I'm sure that we can handle any eventuality. All right. All right, I give up. But don't forget, I warned you. As for you, I'm telling you again, don't leave this county without contacting me. And that's an order. That man has a badge instead of a brain. Well, come on, Professor. We'd better get started if we want to get the camp set up before dark. Morning, Dad. Morning. Why, you're an early bird. No, Wayne and I have been up for hours. Did you have a good sleep, dear? Well, better than I expected to under the circumstances. Where's Wayne? He's out having a preliminary look around. He should be back any minute now. to do, Joe? Kill me? I thought we were friends. Shoot at rabbit. Well, you certainly had me scared. That bullet came awfully close. I not miss what I shoot at. Why are you here? We're here in search of something. You've come to rob the graves of my people? No, Joe. We haven't come to disturb any Indian graves. We're looking for a trace of a Spanish soldier who enslaved your people many years ago. Do you not touch graves? I promise you will not disturb the sleep of your ancestors. You're not like the others. You always speak the truth. I'll give you my word, Joe. If you promise to do your hunting somewhere else. You are my friend. This is bad place for you to be. Only evil can come to you here. Oh, we heard a shot, Wayne. Is there anything wrong? No, it was... I was probably just a hunter. I'm puzzled about something else. I was up here a couple of weeks ago, and since then, a lot of things have changed. In what way? I can't quite put my finger on it, but... Oh, I got it. The storm. I don't follow you. I found a lot of disturbed brush and toppled rocks. Had a feeling someone else might be here, but... that recent electrical storm we had, it accounts for a lot of things. Good. You had me worried for a moment. Will you still be able to show Dad the place you found the cross? Oh, sure. The storm washed away a lot of the topsoil to make our job easier. Splendid. I'm anxious to get started. Oh, uh, I see that you've indicated an area on this chart of Devil's Crag. Yes. I found the cross right about here. You'll notice I laid out the entire area in a grid. I purposely didn't include the actual location where Indians are known to be buried. I'm certain we wouldn't find what we're looking for there. We can work systematically in this area using the metal detector. Won't your detector turn up a lot of useless things? Oh, not at all, dear. 
I'm sure the Wayne is counting on the fact that the Indians in this area used very little metal. The Spaniards, of course, used a great deal. Now, if we are fortunate enough to unearth some Spanish metal relics, we'll know that Fargus and his men were here. That's right. Well, shall we get started, Professor? What right can away. I do? Well, since you've made the beds, you can wash the dishes and tidy up the camp. And then start lunch, and plenty of it will be famished. <laughs> you men have all the fun. Sign of the needle yet? Needle? Needle, haystack, a Spanish giant who may or may not have lived 500 years ago. Yes, but there was such a man, Janet. The references all show that Vargas... Oh, Dad, was... don't you know when you're licked? You're never going to prove it. But we're so close, Janet. I'm sure we are. And I feel that after three summers of disappointment, you ought to give up. Oh, Dad, I've had all I can take. All right. I guess it was just a dream, an obsession. I suppose I'm just a crazy old fool. And I was so sure. So sure. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt you, Dad, but you've got to admit it looks hopeless. Well, we finish out the day's work and then go back to camp and start packing in the morning. I am sorry, Dad. I, I still think you're the greatest. Thanks, dear. Thank you. It was just a long gamble, and I lost. It's, it's just as simple as that. Ah, coffee. Wayne, coffee break. Thank you. How do you operate this gadget? I still don't hear anything. You hear a tone only when the detector is near something metallic. The closer it is, the louder the sound. It might be fun to try. I think I'll do it a while. Be my guest. You can start over there where I left off. Now, Wayne, I've decided to give it up. Well, we gave it a good try. We'll go back to camp right away. There's. There's no reason to postpone the inevitable. I'm sorry, sir. I'll go get Jan.
Truffle jam? Not as easy as it looks. No, it isn't. Especially since you strayed outside the area we charted. Oh? Come on, I'll help you back. Oh, dear, my compact. I left it on the log. Well, I'll get it. Here, I think I found something. You ought to be very proud. Yes, dear, I am. There could be no doubt about my theories now. When I publish my findings, I'm sure that we will have added a new chapter to the history of California. Well, what's the next step? Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to leave here as soon as possible. I'm very anxious to get these relics to the museum. There is only one thing that I regret. Oh, what's that? that we could find no trace of Vargas, the Diablo giant himself. Oh, no. Here we go again. <laughs> oh, no, no. I proved my point. They were definitely members of his band. Even I wouldn't think of stretching our luck that far. Obviously, he wasn't buried with the others. You know, there's something that puzzles me. Huh? Why were they all buried so close together and in their armor? Well, it's my belief that they all died about the same time, probably as a result of an epidemic, and that the, the Indians or their survivors buried them along with their personal possessions. If you say so. <laughs> well, if we're going to get started, I'd better have Wayne give us a hand. It looks like those storm clouds are headed our way. Have you seen him? Yes, he's out doing some uh, field work of his own. What do you say we join in and see how he's getting along? Fine. Professor, I'm glad you're here. How are you doing? Remember my telling you that a recent electrical storm caused many changes around here? Yes. Well, I think I've located where the lightning struck. Must have been right here. The most amazing thing has happened. What? Well, portions of this formation are now identical in every way with that rock I showed you at the lab. The one that held the lizard in suspended animation. <laughs> A storm cloud gathering. We better get back to camp before we get soaked. You two go ahead. I'll be along in a minute. Diablo Giant's axe. Professor Janet.
understand it. I don't understand it. It was it was here last night. Well, it was very dark, Wayne. I'm positive it was right here. I even held it in my hands. Could some hunter just have happened to stumble on it after you left? In that storm, not a chance. Even if that were the case, he'd have to be hunting with a crowbar instead of a gun. I pulled on that thing as hard as I could. It didn't even budge. I was standing right here. Now, well, easy, Wayne. Let's look around. Maybe there's a clue. If you saw an axe, it must be here. Yeah, perhaps that was an earth slide. I think I found something. I'm hitting metal. It's him. It's him. It's the Diablo giant. It's him. Look at the size of it. I didn't dare hope. I didn't dare hope that we'd find Vargas himself. But, Dad, wait a minute. Are you sure you have found him? What do you mean? Of course we have. This must be his armor. But that's just it. If this is Vargas' grave, where are his bones? That's right. Wayne, this doesn't appear to be a burial find. How do you account for the depression here? Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't think he could still be alive. If he were, it could explain a lot of things that have been happening. Well, it's impossible. He's been dead at least 500 years. So was that lizard I found. Well, that's different. A lower, less complex form of life, perhaps, but a human. No, no, it's, it's just impossible. I wonder. It's, it's just unbelievable. Vargas really was a giant. Holy mackerel. Uh oh, it's your friend Charlie Brown. I'll get rid of him. If news of what we found gets around, we'll be stampeded by rubbernecks and souvenir hunters. You're right. We'll let you handle this. Come on, Jack. Hi, Charlie. Jeepers, Mr. Brutes, what is it? It's a suit of Spanish armor, Charlie. Over 500 years old. We just found it. It's what the professor's been looking for. Oh, gee, that looks like gold. It is. Charlie, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Sure, Mr. Brooks, anything. I don't want you to tell anyone about what you've seen up here today. Gosh, no one? No one, not even Anne. Why not? I want to keep it quiet for a few days, until we can finish our work. Otherwise, the whole town will be streaming up here, and we won't be able to get anything done. Oh, I see. Well, sure, Mr. Brooks. It'll just be for a few days, then we can tell everyone about it. Cheapers, will they be surprised? Oh, I guess I'll go on back down, then. You know, I haven't seen a rabbit all day. Well, so long, Charlie. Remember what I told you, huh? You bet. So long. I have a little more work to do on my notes before I go to bed. Are you two ready to turn in? It's a funny thing. It must be this mountain air or something, but I'm not a bit sleepy. Neither am I. You know, we've been working so hard, I haven't had a chance to show you how beautiful these mountains really are. Come along, Jan, there's something I want to show you. Where are we going? It's not far, come on. Well, do you think we ought to go out there in the dark? It's bright as day in the moonlight. What do you think, Dad? I think you'd better run along, dear. See, you're trapped, come on. What do you think of it? Oh, Wayne, it's breathtaking. I knew you'd like it. You know something? You ought to go out in the moonlight more often. It makes your eyes even more beautiful. Well, thank you for those kind words, sir. You've no idea what a relief it is to hear something besides bones, armor, giants. I sometimes forget I'm a woman. I haven't forgotten. I thought I heard something. Sure, I didn't hear anything. It's probably just me. I don't know why I've been so jumpy ever since we first came here. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I... I just don't think we did right in disturbing those graves. Oh, I know it's all for science, but... somehow I have a feeling that no good can come of it. 
How can you say a thing like that when something very good has already come up? What? I met you. I had no idea you knew almost as much about women as you do about rocks. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, just that this isn't your first exposure to the spell of the moonlight with a young lady. I've been working on my thesis all year. Besides, there aren't any young ladies up here. Well, I've heard that Anne Brown isn't exactly an old hag. Charlie's sister, Anne? She's just a good friend. Oh, I'll admit she's a little older than Charlie, but well, they're just a couple of kids who live by themselves since their folks died. I often visit them. I said them. Well, since Dad and I will be leaving soon, you'll be able to resume your visits to them. Oh, I get it. It's not just the digging you're anxious to get away from. There's someone waiting for you when you get back to the city. Does that answer your question? Janet. I think we'd better be getting back. Shame to waste all this wonderful moonlight. There'll be other moonlight nights. worried about you, Wayne. Where's Janet? Oh, she's turning in. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day for all of us. It's gone. I don't understand. Who could have? Whoever it was did a good job. Helmet, breastplate, medallion, everything's gone. And look here. Is that a footprint? If it is, it's twice the size of mine. What could it mean? I don't know. Janet, get your clothes on. There's going to be no more sleep tonight. I'll put some wood in the fire. In case our intruder decides to return, we'll be ready for him. But, sis, I don't think it's safe to leave you alone up here. Oh, nonsense, Charlie. We need the money you make at the lodge. You'd better get there before they fire you. The sheriff says it's dangerous up here. I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. But... No buts. Now, get along. I can take care of myself. Anyway, I've got Dad's rifle here.
you, Wayne. I'm afraid I'm getting a little junk. Oh, we all are. Where's Janet? She's in the tent. I wanted her to get a little rest. Good. She needs it. Sit down, Wayne. I want to talk to you. You know, I've been sitting in there desperately trying to arrive at some logical explanation. Now, did you notice any unusual occurrence about the large armor? Did you notice that it was better preserved than the others? Say, that's right. I have thought this over very carefully. And I have come to the conclusion that there is some unusual and unknown substance in the earth up here that acts as a preservative. Some high incidence, possibly, of tannic acid from oak leaves or from some other organic substance, at any rate. Something which sustains life. Now, your lizard in the rock is a case in point. At first, I was reluctant to accept that theory, but I do now. Go on, sir. Well, acting upon this supposition, Vargas and his men arrived here and were stricken with an epidemic. All of the men died, but not Vargas. His unusual strength sustained him, but he fell into a deep coma. Now, the Indians mistook this for death and buried him at a spot near where we found the armor. Now, fantastic as it sounds, I believe that his body has been preserved for centuries. And during that electrical storm, a, a bolt of lightning struck near enough to rekindle a spark of life? Oh, but Wayne, if what you're saying is true, well, that means the yes, I know. the I... battle axe, the armor, it, it must have been. I know. I know it sounds impossible. But it's the only possibility I can think of. Well, there's just one other possibility. It's possible that someone's just trying to frighten us away. The first thing to do is to get into town and alert the sheriff before there are any more murders. Well, tonight, but the road is so dangerous. We'll have to chance it. There's no time to lose. Don't anybody move. Drop that gun bell. Who's there? Who is it? What do you want? It's Parker, Sheriff Parker. Oh, thank goodness it's you. Put your hands out in front of you, Brooks. What is the meaning of this, Sheriff? You're under arrest. What? This is ridiculous. Since when is murder ridiculous, miss? Murder? Parker, this time you're going too far. I haven't even started with you yet. Well, this is a very serious charge, Sheriff. Who is he accused of killing? Ann Brown. I just came from there. Oh, no. Oh, Wayne, I am sorry. Sheriff, I haven't seen Ann in over a week. No? Then how do you account for this? Well, that's the medallion. Well, that came from... I know where it came from. It was clutched in a dead girl's hand, and her brother Charlie identified it. That's right. Even after you made him promise not to tell. But I can explain that. You can do your explaining in court. I tell you, I haven't left this camp. But I can tell you something that might help. Hold it. Remember, anything you say may be held in evidence against you. Let's go. Sheriff, you're making a terrible mistake. We were just getting some evidence to present to you which will help clear up all these crimes. You can make your depositions for the suspect at the hearing. Until the court decrees otherwise, he's under arrest for the murder of Ann Brown and Harold Banks. Come on, let's go. Oh, Dad, Wayne couldn't have done it. He's been here with us all night. Well, of course not, dear. That sheriff is just as stubborn as Wayne said he was. We've got to do everything we can to help him, but first I have to make a plaster cast of that footprint. Otherwise, no one will believe me. I tell you, I have nothing to do with Ann's death. While we're standing here, the real killer's still on the loose. Everyone in the valley's in danger. Can't I make you understand? You don't know when you're beat, do you, kid? I'm not beat. I have witnesses. But what about you? Listen, Parker, I know you don't like me, but this is much more important. If anything happens while you've got me in custody, like another killing, 
It'll be just as though you had done it yourself. Outside of being the laughing stock of the entire county, you'll have to live with the memory of it for the rest of your hard-headed life. All right, you started something. Suppose you finish it. Someone entered our camp tonight and stole some valuable things, including the medallion. Now, whoever did it must also have killed Ann. Indian Joe's shack is just down the road. Unless I miss my guess, we'll find the rest of the stolen things there. Indian Joe? What's he got to do with it? I'll tell you on the way. It'll just take five minutes. What do you say? Crazy for letting you talk me into this. Just don't try anything. One false move and I'll blow your head off. Joe! Joe! No sign of it. Joe! No light, either. That doesn't mean he's not here. He has eyes like a cat. There's your alibi. of this. Before I left, there was some talk of a lynching. Stay here in the car. I'll find out what this is all about.
the sheriff. Giant! He is alive. He's taking Janet. Quick, climb in. Oh, what about the sheriff? Don't worry, he'll follow. After him, man. I want that murderer dead or alive. Come on, Professor. Go ahead, Professor. Hurry! Parker will be right behind us. Stay here and tell him what's happened. into a half circle and don't get over 20 yards apart. Right, Sheriff. Right. Don't worry, Mr. Cleveland. We'll find them. Bud will stay here with you. Thank you.
I don't know what to say, Wayne. I read this thing all wrong. I'm sorry. Forget it. We've got work to do together. Fair enough. Right now, have you got any suggestions? Well, he's been hanging around our camp here. He might come back just by instinct. Yeah. Anyway, this will make a good base for our operation. As soon as I get the professor and Janet off to town, we can get started. Well, Sheriff, uh, the key? I see you got back all right, huh? Thanks for letting me come along, Sheriff. I'm going to do everything I can to help. You were a big help, Charlie, by driving the Clevelands into town and bringing these supplies back. Did you manage to get everything? Yes, sir. Shotgun shells, rifle ammunition, box of flares, and, uh, and I got Georgia come along, too. Good. Where's the food? Jeepers. I ordered it at the lodge, and I forgot to pick it up. Look, I'll go back and get it. Forget it. We need it, we'll send back for it. Fellas? Grab this stuff and take it over to our advanced base. Where do you want me to pack, Sheriff? Well, not a thing, Charlie. You see, I want you to stay here and guard the camp. But, gee, you're on his trail and I want to be there. No, you stay here. If anything happens and you need help, fire one shot as a warning signal. You got a gun? Yes, sir. I'll guard the camp for my life. Good boy. We got him spotted. Where? He's headed for Box Ledge. There's only one way down from there. We got him trapped if we get there in time. Give me a hand. We'll get the flares and pass them out to the man. Let's go. Together, man. We've got him trapped. Watch your step. Don't take any chances. We're almost a box ledge now. Yeah. We'll have to get closer to get a shot at him. Better kill the flares. He can see every move we make. You're right. We're closing in, man. Put out those flares. Stay close behind us! I saw something move up there. Look out! Take cover! <laughs> Boxed in up there, all right. It's too dark to get a bead on him. I think I can fix that. Have your men stand ready.
better get these men back to camp and take care of these wounds. We can get a fresh start in the morning. Bill, you stay here and stand guard. Right. See that he doesn't get past here. Here they come. Where's that first aid kit? Oh, right over there. Oh, Wayne, are you all right? I'm okay. Did you get the giant? We've got him cornered now. Oh, you aren't angry with me for coming, are you? Dad and I thought we could help. I brought some coffee and sandwiches. I'm glad you're here. Some of the boys need medical aid. Oh, you must be exhausted. Let me get you something. Now, give the boys a hand. I can manage it. Mr. Brooks, let me go back up there with you. Oh, you stay here, Charlie. It's a man's job out there. It's no place for a kid. I've got more reason to go after them than anyone else. Only I hadn't left her alone. It was my fault. You just gotta let me go. It wasn't your fault at all. Stop thinking that. Try to forget her for the time being. We've all got a job to do so that what happened to Anne doesn't happen again, understand? She'll snap out of it. It's only that... I'll make some more coffee. I'm sorry. You go on, Mr. Brooks. I'll bring you some coffee right away. Don't want anyone complaining about the service, you know. That's more like it. Thanks, Charlie. I'll be over here with Dr. Cleveland. Oh, Wayne, do you think he's badly wounded? No, it's hard to say. Some of us must have hit him. He's still dangerous. I'm sure if we get close enough for the clip of rifle bullets, we could finish him off. Hey, what would you do? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. Can I help? Can I do something? No, thanks. Can I spill you some coffee? You know what I mean, sir. <laughs> No, no, thanks, Charlie. I've had enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. He's taking it pretty hard. Yes, he is. Uh, is Parker planning on making another attack tonight? No, it's too dangerous. We'll wait until daylight. Man's job, huh? I'll show him. Bill? Who's out there? I don't know. All our men are here. Charlie. Where's Charlie Brown? That crazy kid. Come on, Parker. We gotta find him. Mr. Brooks, for Anne's sake. Easy, fellow. We'll get you back to camp. I tried to empty a whole clip into him. Like you said, but the gun jammed. I got him, though. Hit him three times. He just kept coming. Coming. He's badly hurt. Better go back to camp for help. I'll stay here with him. I'll be right back. Waste time. The giant. What about the giant? He's, he's headed up up the old mill. Well, just take it easy. We'll get him. Oh, you've got to go now. If he gets across the dam, you won't find him. Go now. Will you be okay? Sure. It's almost daylight. I'll start tracking him. When the sheriff gets back, tell him to follow, understand? Good luck.
right, Wayne. Sure. Just a little tired. That was a close one. Yeah, I guess it was. Will you help me recover the body? It's of immense scientific importance. Sorry, Professor, but that's impossible. You see, that river empties into a volcanic crater lake. No one's ever been able to find the bottom of it. Well, in that case, I guess the world will just have to take our word for it. Do you think anyone will ever believe us? No. No, come to think of it, I don't think they ever will. Well, I suppose the youngsters are waiting for us. Wrong again, Professor. Huh?